at Overland Expo West. We get to drive in a brand new Bronco. This thing is awesome. With the this Sasquatch is, package. And we are off-roading. I mean, we are tilted. Uh, this thing is super cool. They have a track here. This thing is sketch. My like, experience... we are sketchy. <laughs> like, this is some sketchy stuff, guys. Like, <laughs> Dude, bro, I am loving can. this. I think Ford has actually made tremendous leaps and bounds of recent. This, that was gnarly, man. The one we're not sure we're gonna still do, but let's try it with you anyway. No, we don't have to, man. <laughs> Holy <laughs> hell! What is our angle right now? There you go, you can see it right there. We're at 23 degrees. Holy hell! So that's- Guys, I am way up, and my man Dave here is <laughs> way down. I'm having a blast. Okay guys, what is up? I am at Overland Expo West, which is here in Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm not going to be interviewing a whole bunch of people today. I'm gonna just show you guys a whole bunch of companies I like. Today is Sunday. The event started on a Friday and I walked around actually with Mark from Nomadic Customs all day yesterday. And I get to enjoy the event without this thing in my hand because I for once wanted to be a spectator and enjoy myself at one of these festivals and then I told myself I'll come back Sunday I may not be interviewing every single person that I talk to but I will show the company and then you can look them up go to their website and go from there right now I'm under the Sun Flare solar tent because they took good care of me. They gave me this thing, which was the credential. Other than that, I did pay for my entire way down. I did want to give a massive shout out right at the beginning of the video to Sunflare Solar because they're good people. I had their solar panel on the rooftop tent and I'll probably use their solar yet again. This rig behind me is actually part of their display. Uh, the owners of the vehicle are right here. It's actually pretty cool, 1981. I'm actually supposed to do a tour with them later. A 1981 Land Cruiser, but it was an old emergency response vehicle in Australia, which means it's a right-hand drive. Super awesome. Anyways, I'll do an entire video with, with them eventually as a tour, but I did want to show they have Sunflare Solar up on the roof of that rig, and it's like completely flat, incognito. I love it. Maybe I'll show some of their, their booth here. It's also raining, by the way. It's the flexible panels, guys. It's good stuff. So let's go out and check some other companies out that I think you guys may want to know a little bit more about. And maybe I'll show some vans, some upfitters that are here as well. Guys, right now I am in Skinny Guy Campers. Why am I looking at Skinny Guy Campers? Um, because I did put that deposit down on a F-150 Lightning. I want a truck bed camper that can slide on and off the truck bed and I can use it at my disposal uh, eventually within about a year from now. I will share you guys what this looks like on the outside, but this thing is cool. This is like a bed that goes off the back here. And then on this side, I've got a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, he went into a lot of details with me. You guys can check them out, Skinny Guy Campers. I believe they're out of Indiana or Montana or one of those. And there's a lot of other contraptions and stuff here. There's a lot of room up in here. And let me, let me show you guys what this looks like on the outside. As you guys can see, it actually cantilevers off the back there because I'm assuming it flips like this. Really cool concept. This is another one. You have a six foot bed available? It'll be one of the ones we're working on, yeah. And then you have a five foot bed that you use a prototype. Yep. And then you are working on a five and a half foot bed. Five and a half, six foot, five gladiator, eight foot. Are you working on the gladiator as well? Yeah, it's gladiator specific. Yeah. Gladiator specific, well, yeah, because. Because it'll have a little different profile. Right, so. right. Yeah, that, the chart will I guess I got rid of my gladiator a little too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can find everything out on Skinny Campers. If you just find, if you Google Skinny Campers, yep. they'll find everything. Yep. Skinnycampers.com? Got you. See that, guys? That's what I'm trying to do on this entire video. I'm not trying to put a bunch of people on here. I just want to show all the good companies that are doing good things. Uh, I want to show you guys what it looks like all folded up because it actually looks pretty cool. This is, I just walked underneath the solar panel that also comes out. Right here is, right here it looks like it's all folded up. And then obviously this will flop over this way. And there you go. Uh, guys, I'm with Brew Trek right now and I'm with Sarah. Um, I actually bought your Overlander. Overlander French press. Overlander French press. I bought it yesterday. I got a discount though. You know, I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> um, Sarah hooked me up. Anyways, uh, I still paid for it though. Yes. Brew Trek. Uh, you're going to show me another product. The cargo can. What is this? So this is essentially a mini airscape. If you're familiar with our coffee storage containers, airscape. We have 
a lid here so okay. you can put grounds oh, okay. in there or tea, sugar, and then you push this lid down, it forces the air out. Whoa. You put the Whoa. lid on and then you know what? It's magnetic? It's magnetic. It's magnetic. Um, Brewtrek is a company that obviously deals with coffee gear, gear right? I guess yeah, coffee gear for your adventure. Yeah, coffee gear for your adventure. Check them out. I actually really like their French press. What else do you have? Oh, we got tons of stuff. Let's come on over and uh -oh. take a walk. So right here, we've got what we call the coffee expedition kit. It's got everything you need for a weekend away. What uh, does this run? Well, so this comes in a Zarges case. By the way, Zarges cases are phenomenal if you don't know what Zarges are. Um, and this looks so pretty. Look at all this. Yeah. Is this so a big French press? That's our 32 ounce base camp French press. So the Zarges case itself is 300. Okay. And then with our Stephanus, this runs for 500. Dog bowls? Dog bowls are going to come out early 2022. We got the Brew Trekker bottle in 64 ounce, 32 ounce, 18 ounce. That's coming out the next couple months as well. I want this color. That's Red Rock. She sold the Red Rock model to Mark and not me. <laughs> well, maybe you got here too late. We sold I did. out of They sold out of, of everything. Colors. Uh, thank you again, Sarah. Check them out, Brewtrek. Is it Brewtrek.com? Brewtrek.com. All right, order all their stuff because it's really good. I just want to point out in this point of the video that there are, I just picked up some really good stuff actually. Big old catalog. There is, I think, four to 500 vendors and companies here. So that is why I'm not going. There's a very overwhelming feeling with this many people around, having a camera in your hand, and talking to a whole bunch of people. And this is a massive, massive, massive show. It's I've been meaning to go to this thing for years and again I wanted to enjoy myself so I'm only showing a couple guys and I'm sorry but if you get a chance to go to the Overland Expo shows there's three per year and maybe even a soon to be a fourth uh, Overland Expo West which is here in Flagstaff Overland uh, Mountain Expo which is up in Colorado and then they have the East which is out in Virginia I think they're doing a Pacific Northwest soon but as you can see there is a ton of companies and products and everything around. These guys aren't here right now, but I actually really do love uh, Guzzle H2O. I actually have that unit right there. Uh, it's a water filtration system. It's really amazing. This is their whole setup over here. I also have this one, I believe, which is the stealth version that is gonna be going into the Ford Econa line. Check them out, guzzleh2o.com. This thing is amazing. Um, again, I don't even know where they are. They're not at their booth, but that's okay. It's raining. This thing is really awesome because you can throw it into a, like a stream, river, uh, you know, any type of water. I don't think you can do salt water, but it will pump water, go through the water filtration system, and then you can put it into a water bottle or a jug. And so you can have endless water if you're out camping or if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you have a water source like a stream or a river, you can pull it, go through a water filtration system, clean water, drinkable water. Pretty amazing. Guzzle H2O. The problem with shooting events like this is I don't want to be that guy. It's taking away from someone that's actually asking good questions to companies or they want to know something and I don't want to take them away or make them awkward. So it's a little hard to shoot sometimes. However, behind me, you guys were about to see where all my friends are. These are all the van people. Uh, Zen Vans is actually right behind me. I'm going to go and say hello to them. The tour of that van right there that's coming up in the near, very, very near future. There's Zen Vans, yes. They do good work. And they're out of Portland. Yay. For, I can't even say it's on a Connell line. It's a Ford Classic. Oh my God. All right, guys, I'm now with uh, Field Van. They have a nice setup here. I'll spin around. They've got a couple vans over there. They've got a couple over here. This is called the Classic. Just wanted to show what's possible on an O'Connell line, even though this is not an O'Connell line. He just explained it to me that it's like this weird stuff. Check out this. Can't go wrong with a pop top in there. Should I do this on my Ford Econa line is the biggest question. Get a little lift action, get a little four by four action. We'll see what happens. But just wanted to show you guys what is possible with these cool Econa lines. Uh, all right guys, uh, at Overland Expo West, they have this really cool offer that is, uh, what was your name my man? Dave. Dave? Yep. Dave, we get to drive in a brand new Bronco. 
This is the 2021, 21, 22? 21. 21, yes, it's sir. the two door, what's the model? This one's the wild track. This thing is awesome. The this Sasquatch is, package. And we are off-roading, I mean, we are tilted. Uh, this thing is super cool. They have a track here. Uh, they've got two other uh, Broncos that take people out. Um, I'm not special. Anybody could do this at Overland Expo West. Um, Dave, are you guys doing this anywhere else? Not exactly this. Okay. We're touring for Bronco owners. We're going all over the all over the country with Bronco owners. This thing is cool, by the way. This track, <laughs> like this is some sketchy stuff, guys. Like, <laughs> Dude, bro, I am loving can't. this. We were about two laps from shutting this down because of the mud, because we're slipping all over the place. So really? We're out here at the right time. Oh my god, this is <laughs> awesome, you guys. It's been pouring rain for the last like 15, 20 minutes. Um, That's the whole conversation we were just having. When you really? Yeah. You know, and you, I'm like, so, what timing did you guys have with me? Well, this is cool. I'm going to try to do this Whoa. right here. Right here, we try to get stuck a little bit. Let's see if we can do it. I try to stop it here. So right now, our wheels are spinning. We're good. Yeah, this we... has lockers that are this easy. Button and drive off. What? Those are the rear lockers. Those are front lockers. You choose which one you want. But it's that easy. I, I don't know anything that can be easier. There are okay. lockers on other cars, but that's the rear. That's so easy. So easy. They thought of everything when they thought of Bronco. I'm just saying, they thought of everything. I think Ford has actually made tremendous leaps and bounds of recent. This, that was gnarly, man. There's an approach angle. <laughs> this is the one we're not sure we're going to still do, but let's try it with you anyway. No, we don't have to, man. <laughs> Holy gonna... hell. What so, is our angle right now? There you go. You can see it right there. We're at 23 degrees. Holy hell. So that's... Guys, I am way up, and my man Dave here is <laughs> way down. Super sketch. I'm having a blast. I can't drive. I'm not allowed, obviously. Forever, all those off-road enthusiasts out there. Uh, I just had a rooftop tent on my Gladiator as well. Could easily put one on this, I would yeah. assume. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're all about it. This thing is super cool. Every time I drive this and I find something new, I say, well, Ford really thought this out. They really thought of everything, and they really did. It's thought of really well. This is not a nothing course. This is something. Right. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get a good shot of this, but there is a big old mound right there that we're about to drive up. We're going to see if we can make it up that hill. So you don't know if we can? Cool. This is something called trail turn assist. Okay. We're going to make it up that hill, but we're kind of at a weird angle right now. So I turn Wait, on this. Get out of town. You lock the wheel, and this locks that rear wheel. So now we're almost going to pivot on the rear wheel. Seriously? Because when you give it gas, see how it's kind of pivoting? Holy hell. It's called trail turn assist. Let's see if we can make it up here. With the mud. Yeah, we made it up. So the top of the hill. And here's the next thing. This is called trail, um, I'm sorry, active trail control. Hit that button. Now I can set my speed. I'm gonna set three miles an hour. And now it's like cruise control for off-roaders. So I'm just steering. It'll go uphill, downhill, whatever. This it, is if, you, if you're on a trail that's not too easy or real hard and you wanna concentrate. Okay. It'll just hold you with your speed. And it'll hold it automatically for you. Yeah, I'm not doing anything with my feet. Oh my goodness. Oh, we do a little sliding. There yeah, we, we did. Oh. And it's still on cruise control. <laughs> How long have you been driving? Because you're good at this. I appreciate it. So you've been doing this a while? Yeah, like 28 years. Okay, well that's, that's not that long. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Davey, thanks so much, guys. This is the end of the course here. Anything you can tell me about the Bronco that, that you didn't just tell us just now? Well, all I can tell you is that my experience with the Bronco is three full days old. Three days. Seriously? But, that's yeah, it? But I've been off-roading and track and driving for 28 years. So the experience with the Bronco is is beyond what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be another job, whatever. But no, I don't have to make any excuses. This thing is sweet. Wow. Have you driven the F-150 Lightning that I've just put a deposit no, down on? No, I haven't, man. Okay. I haven't gotten that, unfortunately. Okay, well, Dave, you feel me there. Other than that, <laughs> you've been amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, check out the new Broncos. I'm actually in love with this thing now. It's pretty badass. Oh, it is pretty amazing. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. I can't be at a show like Overland Expo West without showing at least one Expedition truck. So I'm inside of a... Uh, Adrenaline Industries. This is their expedition truck. It looks like it's uh, all the information there. You guys can check it out. Uh, but Adrenaline Industries is the company. Um, this is a massive truck. I'm gonna get on the outside and show you guys what it looks like on the outside. But look at this bathroom right here. I mean, this thing is just this thing is next level. But check them out. I'm gonna get out because I some people want to get in. I want to show you guys the outside of this thing.
That's what I'm talking about. Expedition trucks. You want to go anywhere? You want to get one of those? It's only they're only asking three hundred thousand for it. <laughs> it's worth it though. What do you guys think? Three hundred thousand, you can take it anywhere you want. Pretty cool. Now, I've said this already a couple times in the video, and this is the problem with doing filming at an expo or an event like this. It's hard to get footage or quality footage, or at least footage that I want that I would mind sharing with you guys at an event like this. It is busy. Today was raining, I know, but I wanted to show off just a few companies that I did. I also try to encourage people to go out to the festivals or expos like this to get information yourself. There's a lot that happens here. Um, if you can make it, I highly recommend going to something like this. It doesn't matter if you are getting into the industry, uh, if you're doing a build, or if you've been doing it a while. SEMA is another event that's coming up in Las Vegas. I'm really gonna try and go to that one as a spectator. Again, this is something that I love to do. I love to check out new products. I like to check out new companies. I like to check out just new innovative things that are happening in this space. What I did do during this trip was I got a lot of contacts. I'm now able to reach out to these people and I can do individual videos with some, uh, certain companies that I want to show. And that is why I go to these things. I got a comment on my YouTube recently saying that all I did was regurgitate the things that I learned off of YouTube. First of all, that's not true. But do I regurgitate things that I have learned from others? Of course I, why wouldn't I do that? We all learn from somewhere. You don't just like get plugged into the matrix and all of a sudden learn how to fly a helicopter. Like that is my point. We all learn from somewhere, someone or some business or whatever it is. How I learned a lot of my stuff in this space, in this industry was I am friends with a lot of professionals that do a lot of different things. And I go to events like this and I'm like a sponge and I absorb all of the information that I can. I do a lot of internet, you know, browsing and reading. And yeah, of course I'll do watch some videos on certain things. To that commenter that said, I just regurgitate the things that I've learned off of YouTube. That is completely not true. But I will admit, this is obvious, that I have learned from some of the best expert professionals in the industry and I either make it my own like my own twist on things or I literally take what they have taught me and I will share it with you guys why wouldn't they do something like that I don't know if you guys know this a lot of engineers don't like being on camera they feel awkward they feel whatever that's not what this video is about but that's I just wanted to get that out there to everybody I have to drive back to Vegas right now it's a four-hour drive for me yes I pay all my own way for everything nobody pays me to do this kind of stuff I do this all because I love what I do plain and simple Sundays I like to do a personal vlog whether it's travels or whatever it may be explaining uh, how to do certain things add a video per week once this build gets started that's behind me Thursdays is a tour video and I like to take the focus off of me about some other company or some other build DIY build or professional build or whatever it is Thursdays is that and then I have to figure out what day I'm gonna put out uh, the build videos and then Sundays are the personal vlog So guys check out everything. I don't know like subscribe all that good stuff. Here we go. I'll see you guys next time later I